Hello everyone, thanks for watching our video. Uh, today we're going to explore how to adjust the uh, headlight housings. About the best way to show you what we need to is just to have the headlight out of the car. Uh, so we've got this headlight sitting on the table. Hopefully we can show you what you need to know. There's really there's a bunch of, a bunch of places on the headlights that can be adjusted and we're going to start by turning it over. And we've already loosened the bolts up over on the side over here. And uh, if you look, these are half inch bolts right here. Now, this is your pivot socket right there, and that's what's on the back side. And then on the end of the, uh, the headlight lid is a, is a shaft that actually goes through here and pivots on this bearing. Number one, you need to check these bearings and make sure that there's, that there's uh, uh, not an issue with the bearings. Make sure they're moving freely. Uh, there, we have these in stock. Uh, original cars had a pot metal design that was this thick. And the uh, re reproduction ones now come just like the later model Corvettes used. I think they started this in uh, 75, uh, maybe 76. They went to the stamped steel one. If you want to reuse your old uh, alloy one and the socket's good, you can drive these nylon balls out, out of this and put them in the uh, older style. It repairs them. Uh, we've done it several times. Now, uh, what you want to look at, though, you know, if, if, you're, if you're trying to adjust your headlights, there's really not a whole lot of adjustment in here, but if you can see in this hole, uh, it, it should be ample to get the adjustment that you need. And so you, you look, I'm trying to make the thing move, but if you look how much movement is in, in the holes, you'll see that it, it will go up and down quite a bit. And so, you know, it, it, it's uh, from top to bottom, uh, maybe three eighths of an inch. Uh, it might be a little bit more than that. Now, when you bolt them in the car, uh, let me stick some bolts back in here real quick. When you bolt the headlight back in the car, uh, or if you've got it in the car, you know, sometimes you got to cheat and do things that weren't weren't done the way they were, were done. Um, you know, the cars are getting old. Maybe the headlights took a hit and the lid was bent a little bit and somebody elected to reuse it. Uh, up here, on this part of the support, you can shim. What it will do, it will take the back lid down. Uh, you can shim it on either side. There's three bolts here. Uh, one of the issues that you'll find with used supports, and th this support is in an ungodly condition. Uh, th this support is up against a steel uh, bracket, and you get into what's, what's uh, typically called galvanic corrosion or dissimilar metal properties. Uh, and what happens is this pop metal support breaks down and a lot of times if it does and you want to reuse it you can actually go in here when this is all and it's usually this the end right here for for the most most case and sometimes it's both outer ends but what you can do is you can actually take a square piece of steel and put it in here and and then just rebolt it up and use it as a washer it's not going to stop the corrosion that's there uh, we typically treat uh, this with a rubber compound to keep that from, from corroding once we go back together with them. It, it gives a little bit of protection uh, from that. Uh, but you can shim here if needed. Um, your lateral movement on your headlight actuator, or on your headlight, is actually controlled by, and Kevin, can you get in there? If you look in here, these are your uh, spacers. And they're, they're uh, with a, I don't remember the size of the Allen wrench, uh, an eighth. And they're, they're uh, with a, I don't remember the size of the Allen wrench. Uh, and you take this screw loose and you can actually move the headlight this way. Uh, let's see, maybe, maybe a better shot so people can see how's that. You can see the Allen screw in here and then you can see there's a rod that this uh, is made onto this arm. Uh, right here, this arm comes out and it goes in here. I got the fastest fingers in, in, in the Corvette business. Um, but it goes out through here and this controls your lateral movement this way on the, on the lid. So if you want to change your gap between your opening, then that's where you do it at. If you want to change the, the uh, up position, uh, when the headlight is in the uh, uh, upward state, you've got a stop bracket, which is right here. And this is your up stop bracket. Now there's technique, and we'll cover that in just a second on how to adjust that. Uh, if you want to uh, control your downstop, 
that's this bolt right here and when the headlight comes down this thing will actually hit and stop it um, let's see if I can get it to, to fold closed so if you want to raise the lid you lengthen this bolt out and that raises the front of this lid up uh, the clevis when you adjust this clevis uh, you're supposed to put the clevis on the actuator and and put the rod through it. Put this rod through it. You want to adjust it until it is in what GM called a touch position. So once it touches the forward edge of here, then you take the clevis back off, or the rod back out of the clevis, lean it backwards, and you want to turn it outward one turn, one half a turn. Then put it back together. Once you've established this, this is this is also your up stop. And so you want to adjust this down, this, this bolt right here, and you want to adjust it down until it hits the support. And, uh, and once it hits the support, then you want to raise the support away from it, and you want to turn it one and a half turns further. Then jam your nut up. And you don't have any instructions anywhere on how to mount this, this uh, center bracket here. Usually what we do when we go back together with them, we try to pick a common point. What this does is this, uh, this controls how far your actuator travels forward and backward. Um, obviously, if the headlights aren't coming up, then you want to make an adjustment here if you don't feel like they're coming all the way up. Uh, that's pretty much it. I wish I had more to show. I guess one thing you'd want to make sure of when, you, when you've got them apart, and we'll, maybe we'll cover a little bit of that. One thing you want to make sure of when you've got them apart is, is this. And if you look here, and I know we've, we talked about this when we did the vacuum video, this bushing, either this bushing or this clevis is shot. You should not have that kind of play in that, in that clevis. Uh, actually, it's probably metal to metal. I don't see any bushing in there. Uh, I would pull this out. I would check the bushing in the clevis. Obviously, these bushings are good. There's two bushings in here. There's a snap. Not a snap ring, but a cotter pin here. You pull the cotter pin out, the pin comes out. Uh, you've got a, a bushing up here in the pivot bolt, um, which is right there. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, there's the pivot bolt. And you have a bushing in here uh, on this rod, this rod, and this rod. Uh, so you just want to make sure your bushings are good and uh, clean and uh, go back together with it. So, once again, if you have any questions, please email. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, if you get a chance, check out the website. It's WilcoxCorvette.com. Thank you.